Well, welcome everybody. It's video number eight of the tutorial for Comancheria. And we finished up last time with a take actions operation. We saw a war column move a little bit closer to us. And I gave a little reading assignment before going into this video. If you haven't done so yet, just pause the video real quick and read section 4.4 of the rule book, which deals with passage of time. It's a, it's a lengthier procedure, a little bit more reading, but I think it'll help you as we demonstrate how that, that particular operation works in the game. Okay, so when we finished things up in the last video, we had finished the Operation Cleanup phase. We started to do the War Column phase, and I decided to back it up and just stop. By the way, if you're watching this and you're wondering, what are these counters doing over here? Uh, this, this is just to help me uh, find particular counters when we're working through a selection from the uh, success check draw cup. It just speeds things up for me. So don't don't worry, that's, that's not actually how you're supposed to play things in the game. I'm just doing that to help me out in the video. We're going to go back to the war column phase. And so for step two, what we're going to go ahead and do here is discard card number seven from the war event box here. And we're going to go ahead and say we drew, let me open up the war cards. Let's say we draw card number 20. So let's find card number 20. You pull that thing up. All right, so we can see here a card that we drew for movement. I'll just blow it up here. Uh, the war column movement uh, section of this card says east can move two and south war columns move one. And we don't have any east or south war columns in place, so none of these guys move. So this guy just stays right where he is, and we can breathe a sigh of relief. So we go ahead and discard him. All right, for step two of the war column phase, we roll a die to see if we reduce uh, the war column's strength that are in play. Right now, we only have war, one war column that is in play. It's got a strength of two, so it will only reduce on a die roll of one. One strength war columns will never reduce in this step of the game because you can never roll a die less than a one. So we're going to roll a die here. Let's say our roll is a two, and that is equal to his strength. And so it was close, but no cigar. And certainly not worth risking our trade goods to re-roll when there's only a 16% chance of success. So we, won't, we will not re-roll that, even though we could spend this to do that. That would be an unwise decision. Uh, the game that I catastrophically lost, that I keep lamenting and telling everybody about, where I had eight military points and lost the game because my culture was too low, um, all of that happened through a string of very unlucky die rolls, like a one in six chance twice, back-to-back uh, -back ones. Uh, if I had had one trade goods counter, I probably could have forestalled that, but the fact is I blew all of my trade goods on things that were of less importance. And so once bit, twice shy, I am a little reluctant to uh, spend them frivolously. So let's go for step three, uh, the war column phase, and we draw another card out and we consult the event portion. So let's say we drew card number four. So we'll pull him out. And what we have here is a fast moving column. Draw another war card and check for movement only. Ah! Do not reduce the war column strength. Do not draw another event. So now this stays in this box. But the effect of this card, it's not a persistent or a lingering effect. It is just an, an immediate effect. And the immediate effect is we have to draw another card off of here. And let's say that we drew uh, card number 13. So let's pull card 13 out of the deck. And this one says south, west, and north move. So the event here that we drew, <coughs> excuse me, the event we drew told me to look at the movement uh, the movement section of a subsequent card draw. And so that is going to force this war column to move here. It will cross the dashed lines because it is a north column. It does not regard those any differently than a, than a solid line. So it moves here, but per the event, we do not roll a die to see if he reduces in strength. And that is why I say that once they're within two uh, two spaces of Marancheria, I'm in trouble. I am I have to take that threat very seriously once they get within two. There is another card inside. There's, there's a couple of them, actually, in here. War events that say surprise attack, and that means that if they're within two spaces, they instantly jump to my space 
and they attack me. So, uh, yeah, I have to watch out for those guys, too. So we'll go ahead and discard the card that we, we drew for the, the subsequent movement. We'll leave this in here for now, even though its effect has already happened. We just, we're not told to discard it just yet, so we'll just go ahead and leave it there. So note that, uh, again, uh, we, we don't roll for reducing its strength. Okay, where does that bring us to? Okay, brings us to the end of the war columns phase. He's not in the same space as a band, allied tribe, or rancheria. So we don't... Uh, we don't fight a battle just yet, but we are going to face one pretty soon, it looks like. So let's go ahead and do the passage of time operation. We, we come now to the operation selection phase, and we are compelled. Because the operations counter is in the must-do passage of time box, we are compelled to do a passage of time operation. So let's go ahead and work through that. You already read section 4.4 of the rulebook, and all of that is pretty much abbreviated in the play aids, so you don't have to go to the rulebook uh, hopefully, uh, once you've once you've read through it and seen how this works, the play age should suffice. Uh, it is a lengthy procedure, but let's walk through it. It is considerably different from the one in Navajo Wars. So for step one of Passage of Time, we, fl we flip the uh, finished uh, bands back to their uh, unfinished side, so all of our finished bands get reset. That's a good thing. So this is this is good for us. That also includes the band that was out here in the open in Lower Arkansas number 5. Okay, so now we come to step 2 of Passage of Time, and this is where we can create new band counters. If we want to create one new band in Rancheria A's resources box, let's just go ahead and zoom in for that so we can see this real good. If we want to create a new band in here, it would cost us one population point or pop point. And if we wanted to create two new bands, it would cost us three pop points. Um, excuse me. Yeah, it would cost us one pop point to create the first one. It'll cost me three pop points to create two bands. One for the first band and two for the second band and so forth. So it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to uh, to explain. Once you see it in practice, it's that for every subsequent band that I create, it, it costs me extra population points. So there's an exponential cost to creating new bands in this particular step. Right now we have four pot points worth of food that we could spend, and we have one population point worth of captives. The pot points are represented by the, the number in the yellow hexag hexagon in the lower left-hand corner of the counter. So the hexagonal number there is your pot points. So uh, if we wanted to create two new bands, I could spend uh, a food counter and a captives counter. Uh, or I could spend both food, but that would waste uh, a pot point because I don't get to, quote, make change during this particular step. So let's go ahead and actually spend our captives counter to generate a new band. So we're going to put him back in the resources box, and we are going to pull out a one strength band from our available stock here in the out of play box and put them in here. So we have created one new one strength band and uh, we'll go ahead and put him in the Rancheria A resources box and uh, notice that all, uh, new bands can only be created in a Rancheria. You, I cannot uh, create new bands down here out in the open. For example, in Lower Arkansas, I have possession of a bison counter here but I can't spend that to create a new band in the lower Arkansas. I can only create new bands inside a rancheria. So we come to step three of Passage of Time and now we can spend resources to strengthen our bands. So our bands have lost strength during planning operations as a part of the attrition mechanic in the game and so now we can actually strengthen them. So what we're going to do here is we'll start with our lone two strength band and I'm just going to zoom back out to the width of the map here so you can see this a little bit better because uh, we're going to be dragging some counters around. Uh, what we're going to do here is we'll start with the two strength band in lower Arkansas number five and we'll spend the bison counter that he possesses to turn him into a three strength band. Cost one pot point to go up one strength. And so we just exchange the counters with our available stock here in the out of play box. Next, we'll spend both food counters from Rancheria A. That's four pop points worth of worth of uh, counters here. So we'll spend them back to available resources. And what we're going to do with them is we'll use three of the four pop points to increase all of our bands to two strengths. So let's just grab 
three two strength bands and we'll send these guys back to out of play to the available stock so now we only have one two of the two strength bands left in our available stock uh, remember the counter limits are a hard uh, fixed limit in the game we still got one more pop point left though so we'll use our fourth pop point to increase one of these two strength bands into a three strength band. So we have a three, a two, and a two. So we've gone up considerably. This is a this is a considerable amount of military power that these guys are about to blunder into. Okay, they're about to enter into a Comanche buzzsaw here. Uh, so I'm really not worried about them anymore. We're gonna chew them up in battle. I, pref I would prefer to fight them out here, but it, even if they come in here and we lose a military point, uh, we are going to defeat them in battle. It's it's very unlikely that they're going to overcome a three strength band, especially when I got trade goods for a reroll and a Mahimiana in there. It's just it's not looking good for the enemy. We're, we're probably going to win that one very easily. All right, so we went ahead and exchanged the counters out with those of our available stock here. So we come to step four of Passage of Time, and this is when we can create a new rancheria, put a a new rancheria in play. And that's why we left that band out all by himself in Lower Arkansas number 5. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take Rancheria B's hexagonal marker, and we're going to put it in the same space as this band here in uh, Lower Arkansas number 5. Bison and Rancherias, I think I said this in another video, they can coexist in the same space. Uh, it's not when I when I place a settlement, it kills the bison. When I place a new tribe, it kills the bison. But when I place a rancheria, they can coexist in the same space. So go ahead and transfer the three strength band and all of his possessed counters over to the resources box here. We'll just put these guys side by side in that space there. Okay. The band used to create this rancheria has a strength of three. Okay, now we don't relinquish his, his possession yet, but we look at his strength. His strength is 3, and so that gives our Paribo a strength of 3. So that's what we use to gauge that, and that's why I spent the Bison to increase his strength, because I like the mobility of the 2-strength band, really. I prefer that, given the geographic location of this space, but having a 3-strength band gives me a better Paribo, gives me better leadership, so... Um, we, 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 that's why I went ahead and took that decision. Now, there was no Mahimiana uh, possessed by this band. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the medicine counter for the Mahimiana and put him into the zero box. Now, there's a Mahimiana counter that we just put off to the side, but when the rating is zero, basically he's dead. He doesn't have any functionality. But that's going to get resolved in just a minute. Okay, So that's just a temporary thing. And now we come to step five of Passage of Time. And in step five of Passage of Time, we can voluntarily retire any Mahimianas that we have in play and transfer that Mahimianas medicine to the Paribo. Basically, we're replacing our Paribo's medicine with the medicine rating of our Mahimiana. Now, why do I want to do this? Because it's going to help me. It's First of all, it's going to prevent me from making a death check on my Paribo in this particular passage of time operation. And uh, it also will increase my Paribo's medicine. So what I'm going to do, and I maybe transfer was a bad wording here. Um, I do not add the medicine rating of my Mahimiana to my Paribo. I replace my Paribo with my Mahimiana. So basically we're going to retire this guy so he gets a medicine rating of zero and effectively this guy becomes this guy. So our war chief has advanced to a stage in life where now he is he's no longer going out on the raids but he has accumulated a lot of prestige and, and respect within the community and so he is now the leader of the community and a new younger man will come up and become the Mahimiana. So that's, that is what this is attempting to represent in the game. So we'll find out what his medicine rating will be in step seven. So let's move on to step six here. And well, now we got to see if any of our headmen die. And so one advantage to retiring a Mahimiana is we don't have to roll the dice for this guy, but we do have to roll the dice for the new guy that we, we created here. He's assumed to have been a part of this particular outfit here. And so we still do have to uh, roll for him. The only headmen that are immune from a death check during this step 
are Mahimianas with a rating of zero, or one for that matter, because you can't roll less than a one, or a Paraibo who has just been uh, elevated from Mahimiana status. So if we retired our Mahimiana uh, in, in step five, we don't do a death check for the Paraibo in step six. So that leaves us with the Paraibo in, in Rancheria B. Let's say our die roll is a four. On a three, four, five, or six, there is no effect. But on a 1 or a 2, basically the, uh, the death check causes this guy to die, and he's replaced by someone else, um, either of the same capability or less capability. So on a 2, he would get a medicine rating of 2. On a 1, he becomes a, a medicine rating of 1, which is you know, a terrible result. Uh, so that it's a sh more streamlined uh, approach than what we used with Navajo Wars. So that's, that's what's going on in this particular step. So, in step seven of Passage of Time, we roll the dice for our headman with a medicine rating of zero. We're going to have the result, rounding down as usual, uh, with the exception that I can never end up with a medicine rating less than one. So, if I roll a one, the medicine rating will be a one, even though one divided by one rounded down would you know, be a zero, I guess. Um, basically, you can't get less than a one in this step. So let's just say we, uh, we roll for, Ma for the guy in Rancheria A. Let's say we roll a 1 for him. And so normally, like I said, that would be rounded down to 0, but the rules say that he can, only ha he can have a minimum result in this step of 1, so that's what he is stuck with. We could choose to re-roll that, but let's not, let's not spend trade goods for that. He, he can get his medicine rating up fairly easy by just going out on raids and, and collecting success. So he's going to have to earn his medicine rating on his own merits. So we're going to go ahead and roll now for the guy in Rancheria B. And our die roll there is a 4. So we have the result, and he becomes uh, a rating of 2. Again, the best result you can get here is to get a 3. Uh, or get a 6, and which is halved and becomes a 3. So the best result you can get in this step would be a medicine rating of 3. So this guy here, he gets a medicine rating of 2. And something I should point out here, I love this, uh, spirituality culture, um, level 1. When determining the medicine rating of new headman, roll two dice and apply the highest die roll. This is a good, this is a good card to get. And that's why I say that at the beginning of the game, when you get to select which, excuse me, which culture uh, you want to start with, you get a level 1 card for free. It's not a cut and dry decision. This is a good thing to have here because the higher my, my medicine rating is, the more capable my guys are. Uh, so this could be a really useful thing for me. So that's something else to keep in mind in, in the game. Alrighty, so we've gotten our medicine rating established for our new uh, Mahimianas. So now we go to Passage of Time, Step 8. And what this is going to do is it's going to cause us to return the three success counters uh, in the out of play box to the draw cup. And I see here that it is correctly labeled three uh, here on page, uh, was it 19 of the rule book? But earlier in the rule book, there was a typo where it said there was two of them in here. And in reality, there was three. So these go back to the draw cup. So we put them back in there. And again, these counters are considered to be in the draw cup. I'm just leaving them out for the video purposes. So that's how the draw cup gets reseeded. Now, I should also point out the history card in play says, Place North Instruction G into success check draw cup after the first passage of time. So we're not going to do that just yet, but as the very last thing we do in passage of time, we are going to put this counter into the draw cup and now the North will have a war instruction available to them if it gets drawn during the course of a, uh, of a draw from the success check draw cup. Uh, you'll notice that the North typically has raid instructions and not war. The difference between war and raid is raid places a war column on a tribe counter. War places, a has, places the war column into the square enemy space. So a large body of enemy uh, tribes from the north, uh, warriors from the north, will come down out of here as a result of this. This will not get plopped down onto a hexagonal marker. So that's something I don't think I addressed that in the, uh, in the tutorial, but I thought I'd, I'd point that out here in this video because I'm sure that question will come up. Please, again, note the distinction between war instruction and raid. They both place a war column 
but war puts the war column here, raid places it onto a hexagonal uh, game piece. All right, so we've reseeded the success check draw cup. Step nine of passage of time does not apply. It would only apply if there was a horsemanship level two culture card in play and there was horse uh, resource counters here on the operations track, so we just skip past that. Uh, step 10 of Passage of Time is the time in which tribe and settlement counters can normally be killed, but since there are no ravage counters in any tribe or settlement uh, spaces, uh, instead of removing such a, a piece, we lose one military point. You either kill something at this stage in the sequence of play, or you lose one military point by, de by default. And so now we are really... <laughs> It's, it really is a grim place to be here because one culture point loss now would bring us down to zero and we would lose the game. So flirting with it a little bit here. All right. Step 11 of Passage of Time. Now we got to check to see if any peace spaces revert back to an enemy uh, space status. So we'll start by making a die roll for our ally counter in Upper Arkansas number 5. So we roll die for this guy here, and our die roll is a 5. And since our die roll is greater than the AP cost of the ally counter, the piece ends, and this counter goes down here to the topmost empty space in the north's column. Ouch! So we are no longer actually meeting our victory objective uh, because we no longer control Upper Arkansas. So that's unfortunate. But again, if I did not have an enemy right here, I would probably consider, you know, spending my trade goods here uh, for that reroll, so I could keep this guy as an ally, because that's going to really help me to build my culture up if I control this territory. Um, but that's just unfortunate. We're just going to have to to suck up that loss and and deal with it. Alrighty, so we've gone ahead and placed the ally counter back onto the track. Next we roll a die for the ally counter in the lower Arkansas. And this one here, let's say our roll is a 3, so it's okay. He stays where he is and remains our ally. Step 12 of Passage of Time, we get new bison counters on the map. So first we randomly select a territory by making a die roll. And so let's say our die roll is a 4 that corresponds to Red River. So all these orange spaces that say Red River in them are, are where we're going to put a bison counter into an empty space. But if you look at them, there are no empty spaces in lower, or excuse me, in the, in the Red River. So a, rather than placing a bison from the available stock down here, we remove a bison from any space in this territory and we place it anywhere our heart so desires. Anywhere on the map, our choice. And what this represents is the migration of bison. Uh, the Comanche, like other Plains tribes, would actually treat the land in order to attract bison herds because that was their livelihood. So sometimes they would burn the prairie because burning the prairie would uh, promote new grass growth and the new grass growth meant new herds would come in. And so the land was a lot of wide open spaces, but it was managed land. So that's kind of what this is, a, and perhaps a clumsy or crude way is, is attempting to represent, but that's what's, what this is representing here. All right, so we're going to take a bison out of here. Let's go ahead and take the bison from Red River number four because that's furthest away from any of our rancherias. So we'll take that guy out, and we'll put him into Upper Arkansas number one. Now, why would I not place him here? Well, because it's connected by a yellow space, and so they could expand here and kill it, and this space is closer. Again, it has to be an empty space, so I can't park it with my own guy, but I can put him there. So that's what we'll go ahead and do. So our bison herds have migrated into areas previously depleted. Next, since there's one empty development card space on the map up here, we repeat step 12. So we roll a die again to identify a territory, and this time we roll a 1, which is the Upper Arkansas. And since there are two empty uh, spaces here in the Upper Arkansas, we're going to go ahead and take that bison counter. We're going to put him into uh, space number six. It's our choice where to put him. We could put him here, but he's more likely to die there. So we'll just go ahead and put him there. It's still within two spaces of our rancheria, so we can still hunt there. And it's also within two spaces of this guy, so he can go up there and hunt as well. 
So that will conclude step 12 of Passage of Time. Now step 13. Step 13, we discard all the stuff that's up here. And bear in mind, I believe it's all going to be in red text, but there are cards in red uh, text, usually at the bottom of the card, that will say, if discarded during Passage of Time, do such and so. So bear in mind those when we, del when we, we remove those from play. None of that applies here, so we're just going to go ahead and discard these and remove those from play. So they get they get taken out of there, and now we're going to draw three cards. Now, ordinarily, this would be random, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's just say that cards 11, 13, and 14 are drawn. And we draw them one at a time, and it really doesn't matter which space they go into. I usually just do it from left to right. So let's just say I drew out French Traders. So I draw it, and I look at it to see if there's any when revealed effect. If there is, I do it right away. There isn't. This one here says, spend one AP to take into hand, so I can do that during planning. And what this does is I can play it from hand during a take actions operation to trade, conduct a trade action, uh, with an active band in an empty round map space of Lower Arkansas, Red River, or Brazos, Colorado territory. The active band may spend up to two bison or horse counters for an equal number of guns. So even though I don't have the uh, the trade culture here, that would ordinarily be the way I would get guns. Let's see, and pull this apart here so you can see it here. This is the way I normally would be able to get guns. This bypasses it entirely and allows me a way to get guns without having that. That's kind of cool. So we'll draw another card here, number eleven. I see here it's Siege of La Hicaria. La Hikaria was a it was a an Apache stronghold. Okay, there was a, a series of Apache villages that were uh, somewhat protected. I, I wouldn't categorize it as a fort in the Western sense, but it was a fortified position. It was a nine day battle uh, at La Hikaria. And so that's what this, this is attempting to represent here. It is another card that we could take into hand during planning. And I can play it from my hand to place two Ravage counters on any tribe or one Ravage counter on each of two tribes. So this might be really useful to go after uh, uh, and clear out some space and get me control of territories. Kind of neat. Look at the red text at the bottom, though. It says, if discarded during passage of time, advance passage of time counter one space toward. Must do passage of time. So basically, that takes away the time I have to fulfill my victory objective. Bear in mind that if I draw, there is a card in the development deck that when I draw it, it says to discard all my cards held in my hand. Again, culture cards are not held in hand, so I don't lose any culture cards from that, but any of these cards that I previously took into hand, I would lose at that point, and it's during a passage of time, and if it says this on it, that will advance the passage of time counter. So uh, there are ways I could have these cards in my hand in a subsequent passage of time operation and lose them if the missed opportunity card is drawn. And for every card that gets discarded in this, this phase, whether it be from the boxes up here or from my hand, if it says, if discarded during passage of time, advance passage of time counter on this track, it will advance. So that, that could cost me the game. Like right now, if I had a couple of these in here and I drew missed opportunity, this card, you know, let's say I had like three of these cards in my hand. Uh, and they got discarded during this phase. This thing would go one, two, three, and now I'm going to face a die roll. And if I roll less than or equal to a three, I'm going to face the victory check. And I'm not meeting the goal right now, and I could lose the game that easy. So hold on to cards at your own risk. Some of these things, it's tempting to hold on to it for that rainy day that just never quite seems to be rainy enough to use the card for. Uh, and uh, I can end up losing the game holding on to a card for too long. So be careful with these really powerful cards that say this on the bottom. There is no immediate effect here, so we go ahead and draw our third card off the deck. Flip him over, and it does say when revealed. It is disease. Target one in play Rancheria. We use random selection to choose. So if there's only one Rancheria, it would just be that one. But since we have two, we'll make a competitive die roll between the two. And all the bands in the targeted Rancheria's resources box is reduced by one. 
then we discard this card and do not draw another in its place. The effect of that would be to leave this space empty, which will promote bison growth in a subsequent passage of time. So, okay. So we got to find out which of our which of our uh, ranchery is. Uh, obviously, this would be the preferred ranchery to have get hit by it because um, I only lose one band strength. If it hits this one, I'm going to lose a collective three uh, points worth of of strength. So this is not the desired result we have. So let's say die roll of one to three will mean ranchery A. Four to six is ranchery B. Our die roll is a two. So of course, every band in here gets reduced in strength. We could re-roll it, but again, I'm still confident that a two-strength band uh, should be able to take care of business against this guy, and it's a 50-50 result. If I spend this and I get another one to three, uh, meaning that this band still gets hit by, or this rancheria still gets hit by disease, then I'm still going to face this battle, and I'm not going to have trade goods for the battle. Uh, Reroll. That's a more critical situation. So let's let's go ahead. That that could cost us the game. So let's go ahead and we'll just eat this result. So disease hits us and we discard that card. Do not draw another in its place. And that ends step three thirteen of passage of time. Step fourteen of passage of time. Since we have zero culture points, we are unable to buy a culture card, and that is unfortunate for us. So we move to step fifteen. And we place the operations counter back into the start space. We look at where passage of time is. If it's in a numbered space, we roll to see if we have to face the victory objective and see if the historic period ends. Uh, it's not in, in a numbered space, so all we do is advance it. And that will conclude passage of time. And per the rules, we'll go ahead and take the war counter and put it into the draw cup. Yes, I could have set it aside, but I don't remember if I, if that gets pulled during the tutorial. I honestly don't remember. So <laughs> if it does, we'll have to dig it out of there. Okay, so that is the end of Passage of Time. So there we go. Let's uh, go back to the Operation Cleanup phase and we'll separate these counters here. So he relinquishes his stacking. So... Um, Step two doesn't apply. There aren't any finished bands. Step three, let's say we drew a success counter out of the draw cup, so there's no APs for the enemy to spend, and there are no APs on the track, so we don't even make a die roll to see if anything flips on the instruction display. So, uh, now it's, we're back to the, uh, the war column phase, and that is really a good place to stop. It's the beginning of a sequence of play. So we'll look at battles, I think, in the next video. Um, I may have you, uh, we're, we're going to do an operation in the next uh, next turn. We're going to do a culture operation because we got to get our culture points up. So we'll show you how the, the easy way to do that is to take a culture operation. So read section 4.2. It's the shortest operation procedure in the game. So just read that before going into the next video. And thank you for watching. Hope these videos are helping you learn the game.